Welcome to 10 Minute Tech. My name is Steve and in this one we'll be doing a simple unboxing and first look at the new Raspberry Pi 4. Now before we get into that, you may be asking yourself what is a Raspberry Pi? Simply put, it's a small computer that runs off an ARM processor that's similar to what's in your phone and it could run Unix based operating systems, Linux namely, and you can run many versions of Linux as long as they can fit on your SD card. What you'll get out of Raspberry Pi is a full-fledged computer experience in a very small package uh, but you're limited to about four gigabytes of RAM at the most on the new Raspberry Pi. So that's what this one has. And I got this particular kit from Canakit. It goes for about $100 and it includes the power supply case, the Raspberry Pi itself, and an SD card with a reader. That's everything you need to get started. Let's get into the unboxing. All right, like I stated, this is from Canakit and it's just a Raspberry Pi 4 with four gigabytes of RAM. Um, I haven't opened this yet, so it'll be my first look as well into this new Raspberry Pi. I've used Raspberry Pis for a while, and personally I have a DNS server set up at my house using Pi-hole. And what that Pi-hole does is kind of reroute traffic uh, through its uh, operating system to check whether or not it's from an ad site. So there's a lot of applications you can use for Raspberry Pi. Uh, README, make sure you take a look at this. There's a couple limitations of the Pi and things you got to know when you set it up. So take a look there. Uh, that's cool, Canakit provides you. Uh, customer service. So if you need to use that, uh, give them a call or an email, it looks like here. And this is actually pretty handy. This is a kind of a quick start guide for the I.O. And on the Raspberry Pi, there's headers for each of these pins and you can use them for various sensors or projects you're working on. So uh, that's nice to see. A 32 gigabyte Samsung Evo card. Uh, looks like micro HDMI to HDMI cable. Some heat sinks in the power supply. Uh, that is a Type-C power supply, and it's uh, 5.1 volts, 3.5 amps. So that's uh, about 16 or 17 watts of power you're going to get out of this. So that's all you need for the Raspberry Pi. Shouldn't be throttling with that. Uh, looks like a little fan that's provided by Canakit, and that'll help you keep it cool if you are overclocking it. The Raspberry Pi itself, this is the Model B with 4 gigabytes of RAM, and we'll open that up next. And this looks like the case for it. Cool, so they have uh, the little Raspberry Pi logo, can of kit uh, cut out of there, the, the I.O. So that's USB power, HDMI 1 and 0. That's for your audio jack, I'm pretty sure. And a micro SD reader. So that's the case. Uh, this looks like a, a Type-C switch. So if you have your USB power plugged in, you can just hit that switch to turn it on and off and it's just C to C. So that's good. And this is the USB micro SD reader. So you just put your micro SD card in the USB reader, put that in your drive and your uh, computer. Remember, um, it won't be able to boot the Raspberry Pi from this, but you gotta put the Linux distro on your computer first uh, and use Etcher or something similar to that to get it on there. And then you put that in the Raspberry Pi. And then the starter guide. Uh, the first First time you use a Raspberry Pi, give this a look. There's a couple things that are important to look out for. So you know what all of the ports do, what the header ports are, and those are all listed out here. And basic setups in here too. So getting started using Raspbian and getting a Wi-Fi con connection set up. And it's pretty simple and there is a, a nice uh, GUI, um, but it's important to kind of take a look at all this. The first time you set one up, All right, so let's take a look at the Raspberry Pi itself. Again, this is the Model 4 with four gigabytes of RAM. I think I opened the wrong side. Oh, this box is just hard to get in. Okay. I guess they make that box, it's designed to disintegrate. <laughs> so here's a little starter and safety guide for the Raspberry Pi. The reason why it has this separate guide in here is you can buy just this, not the whole kit. This is the kit that's actually provided for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, the other guide came from Canakit about their kit. So this is what you'll get if you buy just the board. And it 
It's in uh, several languages, so. Some do's and don'ts from raspberrypi.org. All right, so here it is. This is the Raspberry Pi. And you can see those three chips that are visible are sized exactly for the, the heat sinks that are provided from Canikit, so that's nice. Uh, nice to see that they actually provide something for you to cool those hotter components. And let's take a little review of the board. So you do have your two HDMIs and your Type-C power here on this side. Sure, all your power delivery equipment. Uh, this is a ribbon cable and you can use certain things like uh, cameras. They can set up into the ribbon cable and be served over your network. So you can run a little server on here, have a camera set up and uh, view that across the internet if you set it up correctly. Uh, this is the CPU so that has a uh, an ARM processor in there. I don't know the exact specs off the top of my head. Um, so it looks like there's two ribbon cable headers, a couple USB 2.0s, Type-C and Gigabit Ethernet. On the back of the board, there's the SD card reader and then uh, just so the SMDs are on there. So that's the Raspberry Pi. It's real simple. This is a whole computer. Once you get it up and running, it can run Linux or uh, host a web server on there and pretty much run 24 seven and only use a couple watts of power. So it's pretty cool. In the next video, we'll be looking at setting one up and getting Linux installed. Okay, so here we are. First boot up, once you put in the SD card that's provided with the Canna kit, it's actually loaded with Noobs. And I didn't know that, but you just stick it right in and Noobs is software that will help you pick you know, a distro to put on there. So I'm gonna pick Raspbian Full. It has a full desktop environment, a GUI, and the recommended applications. Uh, the Raspberry Pi 4 does have Wi-Fi, so if you don't have Ethernet set up or you don't have Ethernet to it, you can also access your Wi-Fi. You just have to type in your password, but I simply just plugged in Ethernet uh, so I can have this installed pretty quick. It'll overwrite everything that's on there. That's what the purpose of Noobs is, to help you uh, install your distro and it'll actually take a little bit to write so that's the downside of the of the Raspberry Pis and the system they use because SD cards are not really fast to write on um, there's new SD technology coming out uh, where SSD drives are in SD form factors I think Toshiba recently uh, talked about something similar to that so hopefully that kind of technology will be coming in the future and I'll catch up with you once this installs. Okay, now uh, Raspbian Full has been installed into the Raspberry Pi 4 uh, via Noobs. And in case you're wondering, Noobs is new out-of-box software, so it's a kind of a distro handler that's installed on the SD card and Canna Kit does this for you so all you have to do is put it in to the Raspberry Pi and get it going. If you need to reinstall Raspbian for any reason you can hold shift while booting up the the Pi and it should go into its recovery mode. So Noobs stays on there and, it, and it'll help you recover Raspbian if you need to. That took about 10 minutes uh, to install full Raspbian onto the provided 32 gigabyte Evo um, from Canikit. So it was about a five gigabyte file that got written. And then it had a few minutes to install after that. So about 12 minutes total. And here you go. So this is the desktop environment of Raspbian. You can see that it's already assigned an IP, uh, you know, from my router, uh, because I do have the, that plugged in. Go ahead and pick your country. Uh, you can update your software right away. Let's go ahead and see. There's another command that you can just run to do this later, but it's nice that it, it gets everything up to date for you on your first boot. So this really is a very similar and familiar experience if you're used to Windows 
or Mac or any other Linux distro. Raspbian's got a very similar, uh, similar kind of environment. And you know, if you want to use this as your, your home computer, there's certain things that you'll have to learn how to do and how to set up differently. But as far as the general web browsing, emailing experience, it'll be just like you're used to on any other operating system, except this is free and will run off of a small computer for $100 for the whole kit. Okay, sorry about the focus there. Um, just the camera's trying to figure out what to focus on. And uh, this is it. So we'll just go ahead and move on. So the one thing that you may need to know how to do, if, uh, if you're using a terminal environment, there's a command to shut it down, but it may not be readily obvious how to shut it down. So there's a shutdown button, or if you run the terminal, say you're logged into SSH, uh, the command sudo, which stands for super user do, so shutdown, minus h now. So if you type this in, it'll actually shut down the Pi right away. If you just type sudo shutdown, it'll set a timer and it'll wait for about a minute or so. Um, so if you want to shut it down right away, that's how you do it. That's all I have for this one. See you next time.